Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orst, and today we are covering Your New Router is More Secure. This is the sequel and follow-up video to Your Router is Not Secure, and I'm making this video to be a little bit more positive to show the things that have gotten better with wireless security uh, for consumer-grade routers, as opposed to the pitfalls and where they are lacking. And so I'd like to get started with this video by highlighting uh, first and foremost the WPA2 personal wireless security. And so this is the most secure version of WPA or wireless security out there. And so it has not been cracked as a protocol as a whole, which is good. However, I would like to note that it can be cracked with brute force guessing. So I would like to note that it's still the best out there, even though it, it does have its own uh, limitations, but it's better than anything else out there. And let alone things like WPA3 that's coming out soon and has already been approved will address these pitfalls and should resolve any brute force attempts. Additionally, if you have anything that does not have WPA2 personal right now and is on WPA or W or WEP, I would highly suggest uh, ditching that router and go ahead and getting a new one that supports WPA2 personal at the least. Second is uh, parental controls. So these have been out there in, in the enterprise for a long time. However, uh, there really hasn't been a consumer need until the recent proliferation of what I'd say IoT devices, network devices, just you know iPads, tablets, whatever you call it. Uh, now there's a reason why we want to block these things, especially for people that have children and want to really control internet access or in general, any type of access. These are on a per device basis or at least for my current implementation with uh, Lynx as well. And there's three major things that I've noticed that they can do. One is the specific website blocks. And so this is just as it sounds. You go ahead and you put a website in to a URL field that they have, and you go ahead and just block it. That's it. It, it will totally block that website for the user achieving that and so um, or trying to reach that website for that device the second thing i'd like to highlight is the ability to pause internet or schedule a pause so this is great because it allows you to stop device access to the internet at certain times or on demand and so I've seen this in the commercial, I think, with AT&T, where the parents are leaving to go somewhere and they pause internet access uh, for the kids' devices. And so um, I find this better in a nighttime sense, especially when there are devices that you do not expect to have internet access at, at certain times of the day. And this is more secure since any potential type of malware that may or may not be more active at different parts of the day can be blocked from any type of activity or downloading different stages of the malware, uh, especially at night. So this, this blocks that ability and does give it some levels of control. Um, lastly, I'd like to note the ability to do web filtering. And this is basically what we've known in enterprise as a proxy or a web proxy. Now, the good parts about this is basically you can define the categories on what websites to block. So if we're talking about known malicious websites or you know adult content or anything like that can be blocked through uh, these categories. Uh, so it's really useful for that sense. However, one thing that does upset me or is a downfall is that this is currently a paid feature for uh, the system that I have. And so with that, I wish they would make it open source. Because then here, you can just add in your own categories uh, that are known to be blocked or let alone 
use a different provider uh, that blocks them. In this case, with Lynx's Valve, they partner with Trend Micro. Um, so good on them that they have a company managing that. However, there are definitely many open source ways that you can implement this for free and get those controls that make your device and network more secure. And so just to add a couple things to this topic still, um, it's most likely based on a combination of Mac and IP address. And so the good parts is that here you get pretty specific with the device in question. However, these can be spoofed. So you can spoof a Mac and that basically effectively changes your machine identifier and therefore it bypasses these controls. Additionally, with IP address, you could just request a new lease. And this means you just get a new IP address. And so this will also probably help bypass those controls. And so there's definitely room for improvement. And I am happy to say that there's a lot of benefit that they've already put in so far. But one way to improve would be to just make these broad and overarching. So basically on the network itself, don't necessarily apply to the device. So like on the actual router itself, apply these web filtering categories. Just anything going out has to go through that proxy and you can't change that regardless if it has a different MAC address, different IP address, it doesn't matter. So next thing I wanna get into is guest network. So with the guest network, this is the form of network segmentation. And so this is good because this is where it isolates this is where it isolates you from other clients or especially guest clients. So I mentioned this in the video before where um, uh, bad networks have flat uh, implementations or at least a, a bad setup. With that, a form of network segmentation means that your guest clients cannot get to your production clients or your own clients. So this is where if your friend comes over and they want to get on the network and you give them the IP address or a password, excuse me, for the guest network, this will keep them only on that guest network. And this will only work if routing table is not basically open to everything. So if routing table is correct. Next thing I'd like to cover is the automatic updates. So with automatic updates, it really helps the ability to be on the forefront of protecting your network. And so this, as mentioned in the prior video, will reduce vulnerabilities, or at least open vulnerabilities. because most likely they are being patched. Now I can't say for certain that it's always being patched. However, this is a opportunity and a chance for the providers of, uh, the hardware providers to go ahead and update the systems with patches for known vulnerabilities or especially new ones that come out. Uh, as a side note, this can also add new features. And so I'm gonna cover that in a later section with just some bonus content of how automatic updates can improve the system as well, not only in a security sense. And lastly, this is a good thing because it's also on by default. Or at least given the option. And I would highly suggest that you keep automatic updates on. Just like with your iPhone apps, I'm sure you keep them automatically on. Last thing I wanna to touch on is motion detection. And so I read a Gizmodo article, which I'll link in the description below, that talks about motion detection with the Lynx Develop system. And to cover it very on a high level, it, the motion detection here is, is based on signals between nodes.
And so if it notices any type of, of activity between the notes, such as a connection is being dropped or is weakened uh, between parts of the nodes, it can map out physical, um, what it believes is, you know, physical changes in the space between the connection of the nodes, and therefore something has moved within that space, and hence motion detection. And so this is great, in my opinion, uh, a great start. And so this is obviously a type of physical security. Again, though, this one downfall is that it is paid. But also, it's very, very limited. So what you can do with it is schedule time for notifications when your uh, motion detection should be on. What this does will then is send you a notification. And that's it. It just says, hey, we noticed some motion in between the nodes and that's it. Now, that's great and all, but it doesn't tell you where was the motion. Like in your house, you know, where in your house, where was it? Let alone, there's no integrations between other security systems. So where it can detect or send it to, let's say, a, an alarm system that you have that there was motion detected. That's really it. Um, in terms of my pitfalls for that. And so as a feature now, I would not recommend it because I don't think you get the bang for your buck for I think about 25 bucks a year, not worth it. But I think it has a promising future and where we can see how mesh technology is moving into the future or into different avenues of, of security. Um, that's really it that covers it in, in this section. Uh, I do wanna add some new benefits that are coming to uh, wireless in, in general and not necessarily security specific, but I'll go ahead and note them here. Uh, and this may be mesh or not mesh specific router. So it depends on the type of router that you have or are getting. One thing I'd like to note is a there we go. One thing I'd like to note is uh, direct connections or excuse me, direct connection changes. So in this sense, what I really mean by that is being able to change how you connect. So uh, what I've noticed is being able to use as an access point is a big benefit. Instead of just a, a router in itself too, which means that you know, you can have it only send out your wireless signal and then something else handles your routing. Also, you have something called bandwidth prioritization. And so what this does is you can prioritize device for streaming, especially if you're streaming uh, movies or a video. So anyone who's watching Netflix, Hulu, YouTube TV, etc. can get a better connection because of this. Uh, the other thing I'd like to note is for mesh systems, we have simple node integrations, where I would just basically call it plug and play. And then lastly, I like to note the uh, troubleshooting assistance. So I think this is really powerful because it allows the consumer to help fix their own problems through intelligent uh, notification or user design. So instead of getting all flustered and trying to solve the problem on your own uh, without knowing what to do, this gives you some guidance and in a smart way granted for this it does have limitations 
And from what I've seen with my Lynx develop system, it kind of just tells you, hey, reposition, and then that's it. And if it still doesn't connect, it gives you the same type of guidance, which is kind of sad because you just end up getting frustrated when it doesn't work. Um, other than that, that's really it. And so I'd really like to thank you guys for uh, following me on this video. I hope you really got something out of it. Um, if you really like this type of content as well, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and be sure to click the bell for notifications. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a, a thumbs up as well. Lastly, let me know what you think of this video. Uh, go ahead and, and uh, put some comments in and let me know if you agree or disagree with, with some of these things on new routers or how they could be even better. I'd like to hear what you guys think. Thanks again and I'll see you guys in the next video.